the South will rise again. You know, I've heard that saying from time to time throughout my life. I remember old people saying that the South will rise again. People say that at times. What does God say? Does he concur with it? Let's see. Confederate people after the Civil War, which was from about 1860 to 1865, said and believed that. They mostly meant that they would rebuild what was destroyed and start over. They didn't have the knowledge, you know, they, them being unconverted, the knowledge that the people would come up. But let's see what they was talk, talking about rebuilding the homes, the factories, the, you know, the people that was destroyed, lost their lives. But in the United States and the Confederate States, about 600, a little over 650,000 people lost their lives. That war went on for about five years. A lot of people lost their lives. More Americans, that's both sides of the North and the South, lost their lives than in World War I. About 200,000 people. More World War I. World War II, about 450,000 people. The Civil War was more. Korea, about 60,000, Vietnam around 60,000. But why a lot of it is that more lost it, you would brother against brother. Well, you know the children of Israel had one nation that fought, Manasseh. But it was the eastern part and the western part. They fought. <coughs> this time it was Manasseh, the southern part and the northern part fighting. But anyway, more people lost their life in that war than, you know, than, than uh, all the other wars that we fought. Of course, there's Iraq and Afghanistan, they're building up too. But, but anyway, look at southern cities and homes today. Rebuilt and growing <coughs> in prosperity. Men could only look at the physical things. How does God look at that statement, the South will rise again? Does he agree with it? Has he got plans? What are God's plans for all dead people? Will all dead people come to life again? This is the Muslims the Hindus, the Chinese, the Russians, will all come to life again, how many will then be converted to God's true religion? Hopefully most people will. Some won't, or cannot, or some cannot. The choice is simple, eternal life or eternal death. For now, most people have not chosen in this life. They don't know. They've not been called of God. God has left most people out. For now. God has not called them. What about them? If God's not called somebody, has he got plans? Don't he say it's not his will that anyone should perish? but that all should come to repentance and have everlasting life. So God's got plans. What are they? What about this? the people in this evil world's many false religions? Will that save them? No. God's got only one true religion that will save people through his ways that he's got set up. Of course, that includes Jesus Christ and repentance and being <laughs> baptized and receiving the Holy Spirit, all of those things. 
but it will be only by the love and planning of God if people are to be saved. Let's look, John 6, 44. John 6, 44. Now, we know Jesus Christ is a Savior, but a lot of people don't won't have that. And even if they know of the name Jesus Christ is a Savior, there's more to it. Jesus here said in John 6, 44, He said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him or call him. And I will raise him up or resurrect him at the last day. Of course, that's for people that's called now. But, you know, that's the last day is when Christ returns and the people are resurrected, you know, born again. The ones that are called and converted and have God's Holy Spirit in this life. That won't be for nobody in the world that's unconverted. Their last day will come up. They'll come up in the second resurrection, live their life, and their last day, if they was converted and had God's Holy Spirit, they'll be born again. The people in the hundred-year period of time after the, the great white throne judgment, they'll come up and live a hundred years. If they was converted and had God's Holy Spirit, they will at the end of that hundred-year period of time, their last day, <coughs> As a physical human being, they'll be born again. Remember the Bible says, The hundred-year-old child shall be blessed of the Lord, born again. The hundred-year-old man will be cursed of the Lord, <clears throat> second death, lake of fire. But anyway, let's look at some of the things the Scripture says. Matthew 13, beginning in verse 10. Matthew 13, beginning in verse 10. And here the disciples came unto him. Now this is Peter, James, and John, and those. And said, why do you speak to them in parables? You know, when he was talking to the people that gathered. There's a lot of people gathered around here. Christ. But he, they said, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, Peter, James, and John, and others that was around, that was called and becoming converted. It is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. They're not converted. They can't be. They won't be until God says, I want that person. And that time will come for most people. But some know and some don't know. It's according to what God. We're not here on our own. We're here because God chose us. Called us. Let's look at John 5. Beginning in verse 25. John 5, and beginning in verse 25. Verily, verily, or surely, surely, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is. When, and now is because Christ resurrected some people at that time. Lazarus and a few others. And now is. When the dead... The ones that are dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So we see that for as a father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is a son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all, see what the Bible says, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. That's talking about resurrections. 
And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So we see that all dead are to live again. For salvation, hopefully of most, or the second death for some that are wicked, the evil. Luke 3, 6. Luke 3 and verse 6. It says, And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. That's everybody's going to. Some's going to see it and enter it. The ones that are converted. Some's going to see it and be cast out. And realize probably that's when they'll realize what they missed out on. But anyway, all flesh, everybody's got to come to that point in their life that they will see God's salvation. You know, Christ said to the Pharisees, he said, you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrown out, cast out. So let's look at Philippians 2, verse 10 and 11. Philippians 2, verse 10, it says, That at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow. That's talking about people that's worshiping Christ. It's bound down on their knees. All things in heaven, the angels, they worship Christ because he's God's son. All things in earth, the ones that are roaming around on the earth now, and things under the that's it things is in italics so that's not in the original it's probably and the ones dead under the earth in their grave verse 11 that and that every tongue should confess <coughs> that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father so we see that everybody's going to be accounted for. And you can write this down if you want to. We won't turn there, but uh, uh, I forget. That's, uh, well, I, I, right now it's escaping me. This, this is from a, uh, a scripture on a, in the Old Testament where it says basically the same thing. But I, I won't tell you where it is now. Uh, because I forgot right now. But anyway, do we see or understand God's salvation when we were fleshly minded? You know, when I was 20 years old, I didn't have the foggiest notion about none of this stuff. There ain't none of us here that would have had it when we were <coughs> carnal minded, fleshly minded of the earth, of the world. We didn't know these things. We couldn't know them. I think not. The reason we know them now is God has called us and opened up His, you know, His way of life. We follow the many ways of death, love, and sin. When God's called and converted become spiritually minded, only then can they begin to see and understand God's salvation. The world don't know these things. They don't have a notion of what's going on. <clears throat> so, when converted, we then, through God, we follow the ways of life. This way. The way that we now live. How will God control and convert the unconverted? The people in the world, they've got a rude awakening coming someday. What, how's God going to do that? First thing is, false religion will be rooted up. Let's look at Matthew 15, 13.
Matthew 15, beginning in verse 13. He said, he answered and said, now this is Christ speaking, it's in the red, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. So we see that God's going to root them up. He's going to, he's going to, he got to get rid of their false religion, and God will. This religion is the one that will go on over. These false churches and false religion and idols and stuff that they've got, God's going to get rid of them. That's what it will take to convert the people that believe those false ways of life. So, false religion will be rooted up. <clears throat> Only God can control and change people. And God will when he decides. Let's look at Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. Now this is talking about Ezekiel 37 verse 1. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of dry bones. This is all the dead people that's ever lived since Adam and Eve. Billions of people have died <coughs> They, a lot of them's done turned back to dust. Some's maybe bones laying around. But anyway, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Been dead a long time. Some people have been dead 3,000 years. Some 5,000. Some 6,000. <laughs> and said unto me, Son of man, Keswick, can these bones live? And I answered and said, O oh Lord God, you know. Who would have known the answer to that? Not a man. He said, You know God, don't ask me. <laughs> can they? He said, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O oh, you dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> so this is talking about a physical resurrection. This is talking about people coming up in the second resurrection. You know, that's mostly a talking about them. So I prophesied as I, as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Well, how is people, when they come up in that resurrection, go, do you know that they buried each other, they buried their dads and moms and their children, and when God resurrects them, they ain't going to be much doubt in their mind how they got up out of that grave. You shall know that I have done this. They'll be amazed and surprised. Astonished, I guess you would say. But anyway, look on verse 12 through 14. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and will cause you to come up out of your graves. This is a physical resurrection. And bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your, God, your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. What's it done for? And shall put my spirit in you. Conversion. Remember, God gives His Spirit only to those that obey Him. And you, this is talking about when they're converted, and God gives them His Spirit. And I shall place you in your own land, then shall you know that I am the Lord, 
<coughs> that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So we see, <coughs> not only will the south rise again, but everybody that ever lived. Remember, the dead in Christ are resurrected first when Christ returns. But anyway, God's got plans for people, to save people. That's how loving God is. Remember, it says it's not his will that anyone should perish. And it says again, God is love. Only God and his one true, true religion and one true conversion and his Holy Spirit begotten children will be alive forever. Salvation is for few now, most later. Through God, the southern dead and all other dead people will rise again.